Yep, Jerry's in the woods. All right, boys. Well, today we are doing the adventure test on the new 2018 DR650. 91, of course. And we'll be doing a trip uh, about an hour up north to ride some off-road trails and logging roads and we'll hopefully be able to make it back to the gas station here or maybe even home on one tank if you guys watched the xr 650l video i had to flip the reserve on at 74 miles so i think the old dr should be able to beat that there's only one way to find out so let's hit the road see if we can find some dirt and have a good time and Jerry's with this time on the T7. Do you want to give us a, a quick update? How do you like it? Oh, I love it. Good deal. <laughs> 3,000 miles so far. 3,000? Yeah, I'm going to put about six on it. Sweet. That's another bike that I uh, put together and called done and sold to my dad. No, he's been enjoying it. That doesn't seem good. It is considerably warmer than it was last time, and boy, the river's up too. I'm gonna have to get the kayak out. Uh oh, where's my water going? Come back. It's actually a new hydration backpack slash vest, which uh, definitely makes it uh, super convenient when you don't have any bags on a bike yet. They definitely plan on putting a rack and uh, a tank bag and maybe a, a small rear bag on here. But for now, we're pretty much riding it just the way that I got it. Uh, uh, minus the fact that the fork seals are leaking. I think maybe uh, maybe they were about to go and the wheelie practice that I did uh, just pushed them over the edge or something. I'm not, I'm not really sure, but it is definitely gushing now where during the test ride, I, I didn't see any fluid at all. So not sure exactly what happened there. Maybe not the best idea to be taking it on a long ride, but I don't anticipate doing any big jumps. So. Hopefully we're all right. Can't promise we'll keep the front wheel on the ground, but we'll limit it to five or six wheelies. How does it do in the corners? Yeah, not bad. No Tenere 700, but also weighs about 100 pounds less and uh, well, costs considerably less as well. A lot easier to find too. And really as much as I talk about wanting to sort of turn these into a lighter weight, better power to weight ratio klr essentially something that can comfortably ride at highway speeds but also rip pretty intense single track i also am sort of chasing the tenere 700 which you know obviously with this bike i mean this is not going to be uh, you know something that's going to really be able to compete with a t7 although i guess i shouldn't say that we should do a, a drag race i guess and see i'm not really sure what the power to weight ratio is on these two I guess that one's not double the weight of this, and it is almost double the horsepower. This has got right around 40-ish, where the T7 has like 70, maybe? I think that's the engine. I don't know what it makes at the rear wheel, 60s. A new Huma, electric Huma. It's definitely a nice warm day for a ride compared to the last time that I was out testing the XR. Uh, I don't know what the temperature was then. I think, I don't even know if it, it broke 50. Uh, today we're mid 60s, I think, and other than the little bit of highway mileage that I put on, I have to say I'm not not missing my wind protection too much yet. Although, of course, the long-term plan is to add some uh, because when I was on the highway, I, I could definitely tell and sort of tune in to that wind fatigue. And if you guys have never thought about it and uh, you're on a bike like this, maybe it's best that you don't. But wind fatigue, I think, can definitely shorten a ride or shorten your enjoyable part of a ride why are you slowing down turn signal great i don't know about you guys but i prefer to enjoy my rides as much as i can and uh any any little bit of 
wind protection that you can get. I mean, it's just going to help you year-round, especially if you're somebody like me that likes to ride year-round and you live in Wisconsin. Hi, Larties. I forgot how noisy these D-sports are. <laughs> the one on the KLR was like howling before I took it off and I totally forgot about it. I put them on the 701 and didn't even think about it. I don't think the one on the 701 howls. This one must just be broken enough. I guess the one on the 701 doesn't have really any miles on it. It does seem like it handles just fine on here. I really haven't noticed any bad uh, manners caused by them on the highway at all. I mean, this this thing actually does, I mean, uh, other than the getting blown around a bit, really does pretty well on the highway. So I think I've probably only been riding for about a half hour now. Still really just not that uncomfortable on here. I mean, I, I can definitely tell that I, I, I will want to move the bars up. Uh, I, I really just don't like how much sweep they have, and they almost kind of point down. So having those up forward a little bit, uh, I think should really make everything a, a lot more uh, just better for me and kind of what I'm used to. I don't necessarily know that you would absolutely need to do it, but... If you want the best ergonomics and you plan on spending a lot of time on your bike, I think new handlebars that fit you perfectly and your your, your preferences and your riding style is really one of the first things that you should do. It's just kind of a good starting point and then you can sort of go on from there uh, to decide whether or not you need to move your foot pegs or you know, what you need to do with your seat, if you need something higher, lower. At least that's what I start with. What do you guys start with? Navigating via some uh, little wireless Bluetooth earbuds in my ears because I still have just not quite gotten annoyed enough uh, to install a Bluetooth communicator on this helmet. I was so excited about them when I first heard about them and have used them for years, but I just feel like I can never actually hear my dad when riding, anyways. And I, usually I run earplugs anyhow, so I figure I'll see how long I can get away without installing one. I did mean to bring my uh, dual band radios along so I could talk to my dad, but uh, you know, we, we forgot those too. So be no communication on this trip other than good old fashioned voice to ear, I suppose. But I kind of like it. It's one less thing to worry about. You end up with all these gadgets and half the time you spend more time screwing around with that than you actually do riding. So trying to simplify things a bit. Although the issue that I'm running into is that as soon as I talk, laugh, or smile, uh, the earbuds slowly work their way out of my ears, which of course is not good. Now I got a bunch of wind noise in my helmet. <laughs> I was actually thinking about it on the highway and this bike being so much lower to the ground than the XR650L should really be a lot better in sort of windy situations. And I guess I'll just have to see, you know, jumping from one to the next on windy days, how that feels. But honestly, I I gotta say, I haven't really noticed that it's any different. And I guess maybe it's a such a small amount that it's just kind of negligible. But I can definitely tell that this bike does get pushed around a lot easier than the KLR. But of course, when you drop almost 100 pounds, I mean, that's gonna happen. 12 miles in, I gotta say, I like this motorcycle. I think this is gonna be a fun bike and a fun build. Time to crank up the tunes and put on some miles. That's the first bug of the year. It's been really nice riding this winter all the way through. I haven't had a single bug to clean off my visor or coat or bike or anything. It's the dangerous part of the corner. There we go. Ooh, boy. Oh, I love my job. <laughs> Thank you guys so much for this opportunity. 
And here's thanks to my channel members out there. You guys can't believe how much that means to me. Lincoln County, Wisconsin. One of my favorite places. Look at this beautiful planet. You guys gotta get out here for yourself. Take the next left with pleasure. Who says you can't have fun on knobbies? <laughs> Oh, music just cut out. <laughs> Lost cell reception. Did I have the same cell phone carrier last time? I don't remember. Switched it over, but I think... No, oh, there's the music. Okay. My boy Ryan Reynolds came through for me. I'm not sponsored by Mint Mobile. I'd be open to it, though. Hit me up, Ryan. I will say that this clutch pulls in much, much easier than the one in the XR, and I don't really know what the deal with the XR is. Maybe I should look into that, or I guess maybe some of you guys can tell me. Does your XR just have kind of a, I don't know, hard clutch pull? I thought maybe I was just kind of uh, spoiled by my one finger clutch kit on the KLR and the hydraulic clutch on the 701, but this is definitely much closer to what I remember the KLR being before I made that mod. So we're cruising at just shy of 60. Who wants to bet what gear we're in? We're in fourth, I bet. Yep. <laughs> I would have been searching for six on the KLR. Uh, I love my new bikes. I love the KLR too. KLR's still a good bike. I don't take back anything I said about it, but if you're looking for something a little more, or a little less, I guess, I think these are some good options. Which is what I've always said. Now I've just got the the bikes to back it up, and soon we'll have the, the testing and some mods and hopefully some really, really, really good lightweight adventure bikes. Now, uh, another 10 miles, and I can definitely tell that I'm starting to feel uh, a little hunchy. Uh, and I mean, if I had good posture, maybe it really wouldn't be a problem, but having the bars this low and kind of at this, I don't know, cruiser, uh, beach cruiser angle, it just sort of it makes me uh, kind of do that and probably doesn't help that it is a little bit cooler up north here, I suppose. And I wore gloves thinking that I was gonna be on the 701 because that was my original plan. Uh, so, I am a little chilly, but I think no matter what, I mean, raising these bars up and making them a little bit straighter, something with a little bit less sweep, like probably the Moto Bend, like I stuck on the XR, I think is going to be a necessity. It's just, just for my finicky back issues and poor posture, it's just the best thing, and of course, it's going to make things much better off road, too. So, it was kind of inevitable. Definitely glad that I came out and tested it, but. Yeah, this is this is just not not where I want my bars. That's why I'm super happy to have my sponsor, Rocky Mountain ATV. Anytime you guys click on links down in the description and make a purchase from there, or even if you click on an Amazon link and buy whatever it is that you need, all of that definitely makes a huge difference for me. It's basically the biggest income that I have from this channel and I definitely need that since I am trying to push this and if things go well this summer, this will essentially be my full-time job and I'm pretty excited about that. Definitely have you guys to thank, but of course also have sponsors like Rocky Mountain ATV to thank. And for any of the camping content last year or in this next coming season, of course, we've got Moto Camp Nerd supplying all that awesome gear. So if you guys need any equipment for your bikes or your camping adventures, please take a look down below. And actually from what I gathered from a Dork in the Road video about our boy Ben over at Moto Camp Nerd. It sounds like he is also very close to being able to take things full time with his uh, camping distribution website, I guess you'd call it. It's definitely a good small business and an awesome guy to support. If you guys have any camping questions at all, I would definitely say hit them up. Uh, I had no idea what I was doing and they got me into a whole bunch of great gear. So definitely check those links out. Back roads are just about perfect for this bike and i think once i get some wind protection on it the highway will be a little bit more enjoyable but honestly even on the klr or the t7 these county roads are just what i like to ride better scenery much nicer pace just a lot less wind noise a lot less wind fatigue even with good wind protection 
55, 60 miles an hour is just perfect cruising speed for me. DR sure seemed to like it too. And honestly, cruising at 60 in fifth gear, this thing is, this has gotta be one of the smoothest thumpers that I've ever ridden, I think. And I mean, the, the KLR, I think, just has a lot more, I guess, tank and seat to kind of pick up the vibrations. But even the stock bars, I mean, I, I guess I've got pillow top grips on here, but I don't know, just everything seems really smooth. And I guess even when I hug the tank, I mean, it, it just seems like it vibrates so much less until you hit the throttle. Makes a nice noise on slowdown, too. On diesel? On every, you know what I mean. Takeoff's all right, too. Snow! Oh, snow. Uh-oh, now I lost reception. <laughs> Which way do we go? That way? It's a gravel road off of 17. I think it's down this way. I used to know this whole area so much better. I'd come up here like two or three times a week sometimes back when I had uh, the KLR. And uh, before that, if you guys have uh, been paying close enough attention, I have owned, uh, or I did own a DRZ400 before that. And that bike basically, I think I've only owned for a couple of years until I realized that it just wasn't quite what I thought it would be. And essentially I wanted that bike uh, for exactly uh, the purpose that uh, I'm using this bike for today. And that's basically to hop on it at my house, ride about an hour up north to get to some trails and then cruise around on the trails for a bit and head back home, which I mean, of course, technically you can do on any bike, but I wanted something that I could enjoy on the road almost as much as I would have enjoyed riding my sport bikes that I had before I switched to dual sports. But then of course I also wanted something that would be super enjoyable off-road and that I could even hit single track on. And I've got to say, I think the DRZ400 is a great bike, but it's not a great bike for somebody that wants sport bike type power in the corners. And of course this isn't either, but this bike feels a heck of a lot more at home doing 55, 60, I mean, like I've said a couple times already, I mean, this thing feels extremely at home at 70 miles an hour on the highway. And I mean, you, you just cannot say the same thing about the DRC 400. I'm sure you could do it. And you know, maybe there are aspects of that bike that would be much better, but man, it's seeming like it's gonna be a pretty hard thing to find a bike better suited for what I want than the DR650. I mean, this, this seems like one heck of a bike. How many of you are shaking your head thinking that you've been telling me that for years? <laughs> I knew I'd get here eventually, and boy, am I glad that I did. Whoa, look at all them longhorns and all the crows. Definitely feels like it handles nice on the gravel. I guess this isn't my first time on a DR650 on gravel though, is it? We test rode the 06 that my buddy Jason picked up last summer. And I've got to say, man, I mean, this bike obviously doesn't disappoint in comparison to that. Being a little bit newer, I think there are a few things that have been updated and fixed, but nothing really too big. Mostly the uh, neutral sending unit which if you guys are unfamiliar, there's, uh, oh boy, what side is it on? This side, uh, a little switch or sensor or something in there that has two little screws that hold the plastic housing to the metal, uh, inside of the metal case. And those can rattle loose after the plastic shrinks enough from the heat cycling. So uh, definitely something to keep an eye out on. I need to figure out what year they actually started loctiting them in uh, but as far as uh, as i know i think this one is okay look at that there's somebody else on a dual sport out here <laughs> Ooh. Now i got my 
my sea legs a little bit and I remember this trail a bit more so I think things should pick up a little bit well they already have picked up a bit quicker than on the XR it's kind of still as much as I say that I ride all year long even taking you know a week or two off you kind of kind of lose some of your confidence and obviously you know riding new bikes you don't want to be hopping on them and pinning the throttle but oh it's a little bit hard not to <laughs> boys i love the dr650 i wonder ooh, if the if the xr the height maybe almost makes me feel a little bit uncomfortable i don't know and, and one of you guys have been telling me uh that you've got uh an xr that you lowered quite a bit and that you really like it and i mean i guess i can definitely see where you know obviously whoa ruts 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 having you know, 13 inches of ground clearance or whatever. They're right there. Look at that. We found them on the XR. You know, would be helpful for messy single track and, you know, even two track jumping logs and stuff. But other than that, I mean, if you don't need the ground clearance, honestly, being a little bit lower to the ground is going to be better on the road. Off road. Eh, I mean, it really depends what you're doing, I think. But it, it does seem like, I don't know, I am more maybe just more used to a bike like this uh, just because i'm not used to a bike like the xr which is kind of like a motocross bike with its seat height well there's a, a cabin over there look at that huh did not know that was there what is that that looks like an old bike yeah so things are messy in here and i think this is actually probably from the snow melt from the last storm check these guys out what are these things Not some of you guys, is it? Oh, hey, let's stand up. My butt's getting a little bit sore, even though we are on a seat concept seat. And I've got to say, I, I think I do like this seat concept seat more than the one on the XR. I don't know if that's just because that one's cut down or what. And I, I do like that one, but this one is just, I don't know. Did my butt get sore last time though? Now that I say that, maybe that's not right. This one's more cushy, but maybe that's not really a good thing for me. Maybe I need the harder, harder seat like the XR. What do we got here? DRZ 400 and something else. Hello? I wonder where they're headed. I think that's that new road that I didn't know. Oh no, this is the new road. I didn't know where it went. Let's check it out. I didn't have backup last time, so I didn't want to get myself into trouble, but let's see if we can get the T7 buried. <laughs> I think this must just be a logging road because they're very obviously logging. So standing up on this, I can definitely see where I think leaving the bars like this would be good to kind of keep your weight over the front tire, which I do tend to forget to do a lot. And then you end up with the front end washing out. Um, in general, I mean, this is definitely, I think, a bike that I could ride like this. I could definitely get used to this riding it off-road. But, uh, I mean, I... I I can't really stand up straight enough to kind of give myself a, a bit of a stretch to kind of give myself a break after a long ride. Oh, look at this. Ooh, look at that. Ooh, a couple of bald eagles for you. Juvenile and a, and a big one. Oh, and some hawks. Uh-oh. Oh. Oop. <laughs> Wasn't neutral flashing at me. It was... The turn signal. Do you want to turn around or do you want to go through it? Okay. I, I can try it and then we can turn around if it's too deep. Hey, who smudged up my glasses? Oh, dang it. <laughs> Somebody with a greasy face. Uh, mm, 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 mm. That doesn't look too bad. Ooh definitely some mud Woo. look at that motors go tractionating all the way through Whoop. oh I wonder if this is just gonna come out 
where those other guys went. Boy, what a cool trail. Oop, airborne. So yeah, suspension on here definitely feels much, much different than the XR. The XR essentially feels like it's made to be doing this. This kind of feels like the KLR where, eh, I mean, you bounce your way through it, but it's not, it doesn't give you a, <laughs> a feeling of, woo, ooh, uh, of precision in any way. I mean, it, it is kind of just a bit of a sloshy, wallowy, bouncy ride. And you know what? I mean, if you're just looking to hop on a bike like this and putt around, there is absolutely nothing wrong with that. It's gonna be nice and cushy and plush and comfortable. <laughs> so one thing that I have forgot to mention, and uh, I actually just discovered it the other day when I tried to take this for a little ride around my yard, uh, but that's the fact that these pegs on here are actually rubber isolated. I did not realize that. And I don't know how long they've been that way. Oop, I'm gonna get a mud shower. <laughs> but honestly, they I don't know, they don't they don't seem like they squish as much. I mean it sure looks like they do though. As the KLR. But nevertheless, I'm gonna, ooh, I'm gonna swap them out anyhow. Oh no, that is a DR650. What do you know? And I don't know what that is. XT250. I'm not sure. Always good to see other bikes out here, though. See, the pegs, I, I don't know why they don't bother me. I think maybe just because they are actually metal pegs and they are serrated and they're grippy and they're wide uh, and they really don't feel bad, honestly. I mean, I, I think I could deal with these pegs. I, I don't think that I will. I think I will probably, I guess we'll see what the bars, whatever bar uh, riser combination I end up with. Uh, we'll see how that, that feels and fits me and whether or not I want to drop or drop and lower the pegs. But I do anticipate doing something like that. We'll just have to see how it all shakes out. Um, the clutch though, I, I did notice and kind of realize that uh, there is definitely some truth to the whole, this thing being geared maybe a little bit too high. It really wasn't bad. I mean, it's definitely, definitely usable as is. I mean, you just end up dragging that clutch a little bit, which I mean, I guess we'll see how it feels on single track and how much single track I really feel like doing on it. I honestly have no idea how it's gonna do. I think it will be much more enjoyable than the KLR. I don't know that it'll be something that I want to do every day, though. I mean, the, the KLR, it was more like, do it for a video just to see if I, and, you know, also just to see if I could do it. Don't think that this and the XR will be like that. I think they, I think they will be much more enjoyable on kind of an average, fast-moving single track. I always love this section. Like these trees are cool. Whoa! It is messy in here. It does not look bad at all, but boy is it. <laughs> Glad I don't have stock tires today. Oh yeah, there's some snow. That's why it feels funny. It was frozen and now it's not. Now it's just a mess. Ooh, yeah, this thing, it sure is snappy. And everybody says you do just a little bit to it and you get a heck of a lot back out of it. So we will definitely be doing some some testing on that sort of thing. Kind of can't wait to see how both of these bikes end up performing with a few slight modifications to the carbs or maybe a whole new carb. Seems like, a, whoa, a lot of people say the Electron is the way to go with this, but I think those are like 800 bucks. <laughs> so we'll see what we can get out of it without that. And who knows, maybe try it someday. I definitely feel like I have, I mean, just the right amount of control over this bike. I think having the bars up a bit will definitely help, but whoa, cruising through this kind of nasty stuff. Man, this bike feels good. Whoa. <laughs> 
Like I'm having a bit of an easier time than the, the big top heavy T7 back there, which is obviously a much better bike out on the road and really a lot of fun. Uh, a monster of a machine, but well, also a monster of a machine. Hey, that finally broke up. <laughs> Still a little bit of ice down there. Oh, shoot. Yep, Jerry's in the woods. Oh, shoot. Yep, Jerry's in the woods. Whoa. I got my GPS giving me instructions. Can you pull that tree down? You good? Yeah, I think Jerry's gonna need one of these. As as great of a bike as that is, it's just it's just so stressful to try to ride through kind of sloppy stuff like this. And I'm not saying he can't do it. I mean, I did it for years. He's doing it now. But if you don't need that highway capability and you're somebody that just enjoys cruising at 60 miles an hour and doesn't need to do 75 or 80 on the highway for hours, man, bikes like this are just pretty hard to beat. I mean, there's, there's no substitute for just having a lighter bike. I just feel like we click, I guess, uh, the, the bike and I. It kind of makes me want to tear down here at like 100 miles an hour, which of course I'm not going to do, but... <laughs> uh, I wish you guys could see the smile on my face. I hope Jerry's try trying to keep up back there. Maybe I'll see if he wants to take this on the way out and I can go a little slower on that. I'm I'm starting to make myself a little a little nervous now. <laughs> oh, this bike just rips. I really thought that the XR was going to be the one that I was the most excited about just because it's kind of the most intense. Oh, but this bike is so fun. Maybe it's the tires too. Oh, okay. I wonder if it's the tires. And maybe just even in my head, I know what these tires are capable of, where the stock Bridgestones on the XR, I don't know and don't trust and shouldn't trust, probably. I don't know. I don't, I don't know if that's all it is or not. I'm sure that has something to do with it. Obviously, if you, if you know a tire, you're going to be more willing to do things like that. But I don't know, man. Regardless, I like this bike. <laughs> Maybe you guys can see me smiling. I actually really kind of like uh, the way that I've been using that 360 now, which is not working anymore. Ah! I guess I got to wait for Jerry anyways. Yeah, I like following better on the KLR. When I was on the KLR? Yeah. Although you went pretty fast on that too. Yeah, I suppose that's true. But yeah, the KLR is definitely a lot more similar to that in situations like this. <laughs> Where this is, yeah, way closer to just a dirt bike. Should we go check out the lakes? Sure. I also like that I can just easily throw my leg over here. I guess until I get a rack and a bag on the back. Yeah, Jerry can make the T7 go pretty quick though too. Coming up on the big lake here. And I had a couple of you guys asking about this place last time. If you guys are kind of in the central Wisconsin area, this is definitely a nice place to come check out. Uh, even if you just want to come kayak fishing, there's lots and lots of little lakes here. I mean, we're, we're only seeing a, a, a very small portion of them. Uh, all pretty good uh, largemouth bass fishing, actually, and lots of other stuff, too. But what we're rolling up on here is uh, some of the campsites and the boat landing here for whatever, Adel Lake? No, it's not Adel Lake, it's something else. Definitely uh, a pretty cool area.
So yeah, really, really neat campsite right there where somebody's burning tires. That's not cool. Whoops. And another one right here. All right, cue the music and the cinematic shots. You want to ride that on the way out? It's a little mini bike. <laughs> yeah, mini compared to this, that's for sure. Woo! What? What's happening? Gotta be in neutral. Oh! Oh, really, really sitting in this one. Oh my gosh, and those handlebars are so high and so far away. Whoa. Yeah, that is one thing on most of the bikes that I ride, I want the bars higher and farther away. This bike, they could actually be a little bit closer, honestly. I feel, I mean, pretty comfy, but definitely stretched out. Oh, <laughs> I forgot how nice this bike was to ride. Boy, this thing does handle good. A T7 is, is a pretty hard bike to beat. The suspension on here definitely makes that bike feel, like I said, kind of bouncy and sloppy. Not that this suspension is perfect. I do miss this bike, but having the new ones to mess around with it is, of course, always fun. And yeah, I mean, it's it's fun to look back and it's fun to get back on this and I mean like I told you guys when when I sold this to him I don't think I would have been able to let it go if it wasn't going to him because I mean th this this is a special bike and yeah you know, as much as I'm looking forward to making the new bikes that I've got into something that can feel almost as good on the road as this whoa oh there's the ABS I forgot about ABS uh, I mean these these are just pretty awesome machines definitely not the perfect bike for me, I don't think, obviously. That's why I moved on, but man, one heck of a machine. I'm so glad that I had the, the opportunity, whoa, to ride and build one of these. And that I got the ability to still ride it. <laughs> Jerry doesn't seem to be minding riding the DR too much. Whoa. Yeah, you can definitely tell this thing it just it feels like it floats along basically until you get into a situation where all of a sudden it's kind of doing something you're not telling it to because of the terrain you're riding it over which a bike like the dr650 being as light as it is and the geometry of it and everything it definitely it, it doesn't throw you off as much it's a lot easier to catch it i feel like they're more predictable Ooh. and you definitely want that when you're working with mud and ruts and stuff but you certainly can ride the heck out of these bikes too. Oh yeah, and standing up on this bike is just amazing. It's such a good feeling. That's it, I'm gonna sell both, uh, both the big boar dinosaurs and buy one of these again. <laughs> just kidding.
I did tell him that if he ever wanted to sell it, I'd buy it back, though. And I definitely would. Whoa! <laughs> Easy, Jerry. Ooh! Easy, myself! Well, as sad as I am that the off-road portion is over, I gotta say, I'm not too disappointed to have to get back on the DR. Both good bikes. Whoa! Gets a lot heavier when you stop. <laughs> good? Yeah, yeah, it definitely is a, a heck of a bike, but yeah, as soon as you get into any of the sloshy stuff or you hit any of the, uh, the ruts, that definitely, you can tell, it feels much heavier. <laughs> just like my 250. I wouldn't mind getting one of those. Yeah, I really like it. It's a nice bike. Maybe I'll sell my Sherpa. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that you can pick them up for relatively inexpensive. Going from the Tiger to this is about the same as going from this to that. <laughs> it's like, oh my God, this is easy. Yeah. <laughs> oh, sh all of a sudden it's just like, I'm free. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it is quite the different feeling, that's for sure. Wow. Yeah, that's fun. It is. All right, DR, let's go home. Oh, it's weird getting back on this. Oh, what is it like? I mean, I guess it's like jumping from an adventure bike to a 250 pretty much. And he is right about that. This definitely, whoa, definitely is a, ah, definitely is a, a big difference and really does give you kind of the feeling of like you're on a, a much smaller, less capable bike than you are. I think it'll probably always blow my mind how much range this thing has. I mean, I, I can put around in the mud and feel like I'm on, you know, a, a bicycle almost, or a 250, and then, you know, jump right from there to a little bit of gravel, a little bit of pavement, and then the freeway if I wanted. I mean, obviously I would take the T7 over this on the freeway any day, but I think with some more mods, I think, I think this thing is gonna do pretty darn good out on the road, and I can't wait. Can't wait to put some more dirt miles on it too. It's a fun bike, man. You know it's a good bike when it gives you goosebumps. <laughs> oh, I'm happy about this bike, man. I'm happy about life right now. Hard to beat a beautiful day out on dual sports with your dad. I love you, Jerry. I'm kind of surprised by this, but my butt's actually starting to hurt a little bit. I feel like this seat maybe is just a little too squishy for me. I wonder if this got ordered purposefully that way. Because all my other seat concept seats are pretty darn firm and hard. 60 miles though, I suppose that's a lot of time to be on a seat. We're coming up on the spot that I would have hit 74 miles and had to flip to reserve last time. Looks like we're only at about 68 on this. Must have goofed around on the road a little bit more on the way there last time. Honestly, I probably won't even have to flip it to reserve on this trip. Pretty sure you can get over 100 miles in the tank on this thing. I guess I'll stop, fill it up, and check the mileage anyway, though. 
Don't need any more prep juice yet. Seventy-four point seven. We've got the XR beat. Along with simply having a slightly bigger tank, I think this thing does get better mileage. But like I said, we'll check that when we fill up. Hello, sheeps. Temperature's cooling off a little bit, and I am also cooling off a little bit. Definitely can kind of tell there is a little bit more air kind of sneaking around the tank and hitting my legs now where with the XR650L we've got those big old fairings that kind of cup the air into the uh, the engine so definitely see where I think on the really cold days and uh, I guess if we run into a little bit of weather at some point it would be nice to have those where on here you know just gonna get blasted not really that big of a deal but I think something that's worth noting now let's check fuel mileage I'm gonna put some gas in see you later dad So what do we end up with? 78.4. Now if only I can remember where to put my wallet in all these pockets. Alright. Let's fill her up. I believe that's about where she was. Six seventy one for all that fun. Well worth it. Seventy eight point four divided by one point five six one. Fifty miles to the gallon, so four or five better than the XR. Can't complain about that. <laughs> Come on, guys! Oh, as strange as I am, I actually only talk to my bikes on film. Ugh. And plenty of other weird stuff. Oh, come on. Ugh. One thing I don't... Oops. One thing I don't like about this is the kickstand is just not... Oh, I guess I just haven't figured it out yet. <sighs> Gotta find the right spot to do the... Turn around. Ooh, ooh, I get pinched. Come on. <sighs> about 100 miles today, something like that. Gotta say, definitely impressed with this bike. I don't know if I'm more impressed with it than the XR. I feel like maybe I enjoy the ride a little bit better, but I mean, I think partially that's because the weather was much nicer and I had my dad along, which is always good. Uh, either way, definitely looking forward to getting out on this bike again. Definitely some mods to be done, of course, but man, cruising at 70 miles an hour on the way home, on the highway, I, it still just blows my mind, and maybe I just gotta get over it so I stop saying that, but these bikes, they just seem like special bikes, and I am so excited and so happy to have these all in the garage, so hopefully you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, let me know down in the comments section. Hit that like button. Make sure you're sharing the videos. Every little bit helps. I really do appreciate it, and if you guys want to add a little bit of extra help, you can always check out the channel membership down below. You get things like early access to videos, priority in the comments. Huge thanks to all you guys that have signed up for that. Take care, stay safe, stay swanky, get out, enjoy this beautiful world any chance you get.